in one of the people that you had mentioned in, in this last answer was, was Mr. Shawn Michaels. And that brings us to a question from Sam Halsell. Are you a lifelong atheist or is it something that you came to later in life? Um, what does that have to do with Sean? Oh, cause Sean's religious, right? Yeah, yes. You know, basically I found that most people in wrestling and I don't want to paint everybody with the same brush, but most people in wrestling that find God, it's, it's because they've fucked their life up so bad. No humans will talk to them. Um, you know, I, I wasn't a lifelong militant atheist as I am now. Uh, because actually back in the, you know, in the old days, it was, you know, it was like, Oh, if you tell people you're an atheist, you know, your family, everybody gets on you. But here's the thing, seriously and honestly, I mean, let's just all be brutally frank with each other. It's a bullshit story, and it always has been. And for people to believe this, you know, I I, I know a lot of people and respect a lot of people that believe in God and you know, and, and the whole thing. And, and, you know, I don't want to piss in their post toasties, but seriously, more damage has been done to the human race by religion than anything else in modern history. More, uh, the, the crusades, uh, the, the more wars have been started, more persecution of individual races and peoples, more damage has been done to the accumulated knowledge of wrestling history by religion. The, dis the destruction of the libraries of Alexandria. Um, it, it, it's, it's not even about uh, religion per se. It's about my religion. Do you, mm. As George Carlin said, do you believe in God? Yes. Okay. <laughs> do you believe in my God? No. Okay. Fuck you. Boom. Um, it's not only about, do you believe in God, but do you believe in my God? There are so many different versions of religion. When you look at the persecution and you look at the genocide and you look at the, the wars that have been started and you look at the, the, uh, the, 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 the destruction, as I said, of human knowledge by religious people who didn't believe in the other guy's religion and let's face it, even if there is a God, only one of these religions can be correct, right? There can't be 16 different gods, and all religions can't be right. So it comes down to then, there's all these different religions, but who's right? It's just ridiculous. The, the idea of an invisible supreme being in the sky watching over what we all do, well, he must be a pretty shitty a supreme being because he's fucked a lot of shit up. Well, absolutely. Um, it there, there was a just thing that pops me out of my mind. There was a thing that Reagan once said, and it was, uh, you know, the scariest words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. I, I think it's quite scarier to, to hear someone say, you know, I'm here because, you know, because God told me to be here. You know, I, I'm here in the name of God. I'm here in the name of Jesus. I'm here in the name of Allah, whatever it is that your deity is. And, you know, at, at least the, the Muslims, at least they're committed because the Christians only want to blow up other people in the name of their religion. But the Muslims, they'll blow themselves up in the name of their religion. And, you know, this whole George Bush and the Republican fucking born-again fiasco thing, it drives me out of my mind. Why, why wouldn't the Middle East think we were trying to start a holy war? Because that's the, that's the vibe that George Bush and the Republican and the Christian conservatives gave off was we're, we're trying to destroy your way of life. And those people over there, they really believe their shit. And like I said, they're not only willing to blow other people up, they're willing to blow themselves up in the process. As John Lennon said, imagine no religion. It's easy <laughs> if you try. It's easy <laughs> if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine if we just took the facts and tried to get along with each other as all members of the human race instead of this divisive bullshit called religion. When there is no scientific, there is more scientific evidence that we have been visited by aliens from outer space than there is that there is actually a supreme being in the sky watching over us. So imagine if we just tried to observe the facts and take care of ourselves instead of worrying about this, who's right about religion and whose supreme being is the real one, we'd all be so much better off. From the witch burnings to the to the destruction of the libraries at Alexandria, 
to the countless genocides that have taken place in the name of religion, it would all be so much better if we said we're all human beings, we all, regardless of color or race or origin, we're all human beings and we all live on the same planet. And guess what? This place is an open air pinball machine. It's all subject to random chance and evolution. And we got to do the best with it we can instead of whose God is the real God. We would be so much better off. And it just, and, and once again, it's a free country in the United States. So I believe that everybody has the right to believe in whatever they want to believe in. But when politicians are elected that are making public policy based on religion, that infringes on my right to believe what I want to believe. And also, to be perfectly honest, when I've got elected officials that make public policy that think that the world is 6,000 years old and that global warming is not real because God promised after the flood he'd never destroy the world again, I get fucking worried. It's and hard it, not to. It's hard not to. So, you know, that's that that's my problem. And you can go to jimcornett.com and you can read some of my commentaries I have one about uh, religion that especially I want everybody to read, but I'm of the George Carlin and Bill Maher school, which is let's try to work with what we've got and what is fact and not fiction and not worry about this religious fiasco business. And, you know, also George Carlin said God is omnipotent. God is all knowing and all seeing, but he can't handle money because he always needs money. Because all these Pat Robertsons and Oral Roberts are always like, we need money. Why do you need money? Why, why can't God handle money? A fair question. And, and I guess we can leave this with a, a, a quote from Epicurus. And this is one of my favorite ones. And this is over 2,300 years old, and it's still relevant. And he said, if, uh, is God willing to prevent evil, evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? <laughs> then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence come evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? I love it. I love it. And also I would suggest that anybody out there who has fallen under the spell of religion, watch Religious, my favorite movie. Watch Religious and explain to me how that you can defend the in indefensible how you can believe in the unbelievable, how can you uh, give credibility to the incredible, and explain to me why that we would all not be better off without this irrational view of a supernatural being instead of trying to take care of what we got here that we know that we have and that we could do so much of a better job with without having all this complication being thrown in our midst. And, and that kind of uh, takes us to the second part of his question. What he asks is, what atheist writers and speakers would you recommend to somebody who's coming to grips with their own unbelief? Well, you know, here's, here's the thing. I have, I have The God Delusion, the book, which is very hard to muddle through. I'll be quite honest with you, because a lot of atheists tend to be so scholarly that they leave out the average person, pers person, person. <laughs> I, I will say that um, that Richard Dawkins actually has, and, and this is no insult to anybody, but he's actually made a few children's books, and they are considerably more accessible. I had a similar problem in reading The God Delusion. It is very, very heavy on, on the scientific and, and not quite accessible to the average uh, person. And, and, you know, here's the thing. It's, it's like, to me, religion is like racism or like uh, the, the, the gun issue where it's, it's our God-given right, our God-given constitutional right. Number one, God didn't write the Constitution of the United States. We know who wrote that document. It was human beings. And we also know that they were fallible because there have been some almost 30 uh, amendments to the Constitution, which means there's shit that they forgot, left out, or didn't clarify and needed that. Uh, so uh, for the gun control folks who say my Second Amendment rights, well, bullshit and fuck you, because 
the Constitution has been amended and clarified a number of times because there were shit that they left out, they didn't think of, or they just didn't, you know, clarify. So why is suddenly the Constitution God-given? It's a man-made document, and men are fallible. Everybody is. And let me give you just a just a small little little piece of American history that might uh, not be known to you and, and might not know, be known to some of the listeners. There's a thing called the Treaty of Tripoli, uh, which was, I believe, written in 1796 and adopted by the Congress in 1797. And this was brokering the peace between the United States and Tripolitania at the time, um, which is now uh, Algeria, I believe. And it was submitted to the Senate by John Adams and ratified unanimously. And it, it included this statement. As the government of the United States of America is not, in any sense, founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself no character or enmity enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. Uh, th- these were Muslims that we were fighting at the time. And as uh, the said, as, as <clears throat> and as the said, United States never entered into any war or act of hostility against any Mohammedan nation. That was the word they were using at the time. It is declared by parties that no pretext arising from religion, uh, religious opinions, shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. And that first sentence, not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, unanimously passed by the U.S. Senate. Well, that 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 gave birth to the separation of church and state, and uh, you know, we, we for for, <laughs> for a wrestling uh, podcast, we have gone way above and beyond most people's uh, interest and or ability to comprehend here on this program. But we can bring I it back down actually, if you like. That, that, well, no, that that's what that's what Court did. He he left you and me to to do this, figuring ah, when I'm on vacation, you know, it'll be Alice and Jim and then thankfully people will be glad when I come back. But that's the situation is that, you know, whether it's the God given constitution that wasn't God given and I'm not anti-American, I'm just stating facts. These were people, these were men who wrote a fallible document that later needed to be clarified and amended for accuracy's sake. You know, the, the, the problem with me becomes when when people try because they believe it's, it's everybody's right to believe anything they want to believe. And as, as I've said before, uh, according to some German videos, I've seen people like to have their balls nailed to a step stool and that's their right. But when people are making public policy based on a belief in a Supreme being, and they're against women's rights, they're against reproductive rights, they're against civil rights, they're against all kinds of gay rights. They're against all kinds of rights. That, to me, doesn't seem to be the essence of Christianity, nor the essence of humanity. And I think that we would be better off if people would stop worrying about, what is God going to say, and worry about instead, well, you know, what's right, what's fair, what's reasonable, what's human? That's about what's right to me, not about Christianity, and hey— People can believe what they want to believe, but when it infringes on my rights, that's when I have a problem with it. And to be quite honest, the idea of the supreme being living in the sky that overlooks whatever we see and do and et cetera, et cetera. And the, the, if you – have you ever noticed also <laughs> – Anybody who comes up with a religion from Joseph Smith to Moses to anybody else, they always go up top of a mountain or out in the woods and they're all alone and they come back and they say, hey, I just talked to God. He's got a whole list of shit he don't want us to be doing anymore. (laughs) Nobody ever witnesses this. And people take it as, as, you know, on the surface of it as, as legitimate fact. If you tried to pass by the the story of any religion in the world as fact if it wasn't related to religion people would throw shit balls at you and say what the fuck are you talking about because it's so patently unbelievable but because it's religion and so many places were founded on either freedom of religion like the united states or like in the muslim world where it's like if you don't believe this shit we're going to burn you at the fucking stake So, yeah, I'm going to believe it. Whether they believe it or not, they say they believe it. It's ridiculous. In medieval England, uh, church attendance was mandatory and enforced. 
Exactly. And it comes down to, that's the point I was going to make. Thank you for bringing me back to it. <laughs> it's like people were brought up to believe that slavery was the right way to go. People were brought up to believe that women should be barefoot, pregnant in the home, not be able to vote and have no rights. That's the way to go. People were brought up to believe gays are, are you know, somehow subhuman and devilish, and that's the way to go. It's the way that you're raised. And in, in the United States, people were raised that God is real and Christianity is the thing. And it takes a while, unfortunately, for people to overcome these things. It's not their fault because if your parents teach you something, then, you know, th that's what you believe. And th because their parents taught them and their parents taught them. But sooner or later, scientific fact and human reasoning comes into play, and these things are changed. And now black folks are able to eat in the same restaurant as white folks, and gays are allowed to get married, and people are allowed to fucking do these things that they weren't before because enlightenment has somehow come over a period of time to the populace. But so it, it, I'm, I'm not insulting people who believe these things because that's the way they were brought up and you believe your parents before you believe most people but there comes a time when you have to say you know what the earth isn't flat leeches are not cutting edge medical technology and we now know where the sun goes at night and that's when the bible was written when people thought <laughs> leeches were cutting edge medical technology and we didn't know where the sun went at night you mean it isn't Apollo taking it with him uh, up up into the sky and, and, and then coming back in the morning with it? Is that Was I wrong? Was I misinformed? Oh, well, you know, but, but that's what your parents said, so you <laughs> believed it. But, you know, it, and, and as people find out that, that gays are not all uh, deviates who are going to molest your children, and as people find out that, you know, oh, gosh, if we let black folks in the restaurant, they're not going to cause a scene – and as we find out that, you know, all these other old held uh, traditions and beliefs are not actually scientifically or socionomically accurate, uh, one day, I hope John Lennon's prophecies will come true. Imagine there's no religion. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living life as one. That would be wonderful. And as, as this is Christmas week, <laughs> maybe the best thing that Christ can do for us is having people realize that his concepts were great, but virgin births, talking snakes, Garden of Eden, earth being created in six days, maybe not, but the idea because when the Bible was written, there were no police forces. There were no way to control people. You couldn't control people from murdering and slaughtering people, as in the Dark Ages, except by saying, well, when you die, you're going to a bad place with fire and hell and eternal brimstone and damnation forever. That's the way you controlled people. Well, now we're a little more civilized, so maybe we should go to the Christ-like tendencies and beliefs of love your brother. Come on, everybody. Shine on your brother. Everybody get together. Try to love one another right now. And that's right maybe now, damn ought, it. Right now. Maybe we ought to follow the principles instead of the medieval tactics that were necessary to control people back then. Maybe we ought to just be nice to each other. Maybe we ought to live and let live. Maybe we ought to honor other people's beliefs without making it public policy. And maybe we ought to just try to fucking lighten up a little bit instead of blowing each other up. That would be what Christ would want if he was really, as he is portended to be, a man of love. Instead of, once again, you believe in God? Yes. Okay. You believe in my God? No. Boom. I'm going to kill you. It's just fucking ridiculous in this day and age. And <laughs> with that, I think we've done the whole drive through and we've alienated probably every listener we have. But you know what? Sometimes the truth hurts, but it still don't mean it's not the truth.